Uh, welcome once again to In the Word, uh, part two of the Sunday School lesson. And uh, this part talking about God's provision is abundant. God's provision is abundant. And so, uh, look like I'm kind of crooked trying to fix my camera. But uh, that's what we're talking about. God's provision is abundant. And uh, we're going to read, uh, it started off reading the Psalm 65, 9 through 13, the King James Version. What's up, self Hopper? What's going on? Thou visit the earth and, uh, Psalm 65, 9 through 13, thou visit the earth and waters, waters it, thou greatly enriches it with the rivers of God, which is for, uh, full of water, thou preparest them corn with, I mean, when thou hast. So provided for it, thou waters the ridges thereof abundantly, uh, thou uh, settles the furrows thereof, thou makest it soft with showers, uh, thou blesses the spring, springing thereof, thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thou path drop fatness, thou drop upon the pastures of the wilderness and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valley are the valley also are covered over with corn. They shout for joy and they also sing. Amen. They all they also sing. <clears throat> and so here it's talking about how how God really take is taking care of of the world and the earth. What he created, God God is taking care of his creation. That's just the bottom line. Making a long story short, and one thing I like about uh, the paragraph that the story that starts uh, in the Sunday school lesson is talk about uh, our Psalm six to thirty six to five six to thirteen. Lose that many ways that the creator of the universe sustains. And provides for the world he brought into existence. Unlike the powerless and lifeless idols venerated by Israel, pagans, neighbors, and the Lord uses his infirmity strength to form the earth and mountains. See, so one thing I like about this that you know, uh, one one shows uh, one uh, I like uh, the Koreans or uh, 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 the Chinese uh, kung fu pictures. I love watching them all the time, and uh, and so, on the L. Ray Network, every Thursday, uh, Kung Fu or Karate pictures come on. And I watch them. You know. And uh, one thing they do, uh, I, I notice they say, uh, "Praise Buddha!" I give Buddha praise. Well, right here, this is what uh, 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 the summer was talking about: how uh, how people worship lifeless and powerless idols. So. When the Koreans or the, the Chinese or whatever, when they say give Buddha praise or praise Buddha, that's lifeless, powerless, because Buddha can't help them. Buddha don't have no power. Buddha did not create the earth. A Buddha cannot make it rain. Buddha cannot uh, speak to the ocean and say, peace be still. But that's one thing I, I pulled up out of that. Then that second paragraph talking about how God uh, uh, inspiring these include his ability to watch over everyone and and care for everything on earth. So we should not have to worry about anything because the Sunday School lesson is telling us that God got all power. So if he got all power, he got the ability to watch over us. So he know what's going on with you right now. He know what you're dealing with right now. Hey, Miss Heather Benson. And uh, he know what's, what you're dealing with. So the Sunday school lesson is telling us if you believe that God got all power and he got the ability and, and, and he watching over you and he taking care of everything on earth, what you worrying about? What are you worrying about? So basically, as we get further on in the Sunday school lesson, it tells us don't worry. You know, God got you. And I say this about every broadcast. Don't worry if you really love God and you say you worship him and you and uh and he's your Lord and Savior. Do not, do not uh, worry about it because he got you. 
my boy's trying to leave, so I hope I'll be able to get through this Sunday school lesson. <coughs> but it says, uh, and so it said this includes sending abundant rains and, and to waters to water all the country. I mean, the continent around the globe. See, God don't only take care of America; He take care of the whole earth. He He take care of earth. He, Earth is large and the fullness thereof. So everything God made, he going to take care of it. God didn't make nothing he wasn't going to take care of. So that, that next paragraph, the third paragraph, it talks about God's grace. For those of you who got the same Sunday school lesson, I'm doing a lot of jumping. Uh, just a second time in my voice. And, and uh, But that third uh, verse, I mean, paragraph, it talks about God's grace. It says, this, this was due to the rich. I, I'm, I'm reading in the middle of the paragraph. It says, um, uh, this was due to the rich uh, bounty uh, produced by the plants and livestock. God, in his grace, provides for the earth inhabitants for one, one season after the next. See, God's grace is, uh, is sufficient. God, going, uh, with God, in other words, God said, I got this. I made it. I know all about it. I know, I know, don't worry about it. Like sometimes we have a bad dry spell. I think uh, with, uh, a while back, uh, a few weeks back, they said California had a bad dry spell. Now they're getting a whole lot of rain that was, uh, uh, that was going to like wash away a whole lot of stuff. But in spite of, God still know what he's doing. When we're in a dry spell, like in the middle of the country right now, uh, in the, uh, oh, they talking about uh, uh, there's going to be a bad ice storm that hadn't hit in 10 years in the middle of the country. And, but in the midst of all that, God still know what he's doing. Amen. It cannot, they cannot have no freezing rain. They're talking about some of them going, might get like an inch of freezing rain. In spite of God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. Right now in South Carolina, if they say tomorrow we're going to have a blizzard and we're going to have a foot or two foot of snow, Spot what we and you know people panic. Ah, oh, what we gonna do? Why panic? God, if God, uh, if God uh, can control the snow, surely He can take care of you in the midst of the snow. All we gotta do is just use use common sense, Amen, and and just trust God. But I looked up the word. I looked up the word. Uh, uh, grace. Well, well, Hebrews four and sixteen said, "Let us therefore come." Boldly unto the throne of grace, my God, that we might attain mercy mm, and find grace to help in time of need. I, I love that right there. Let me read that again. Hebrews, Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly, not, not cowardly, uh, not weak, but boldly. If you need something bad enough, that's what it says, you know, God in his grace provide for the earth inhabitants for one season to the next season. So if God, in his grace, provides for the earth one season after the next season, guess what he'll do for you? I'm going to say it again. And guess what he would, just imagine what, what, what he would do for you if you come to him boldly. Amen. Knowing like, and see, when I was, going, as I was going through, and I told y'all as I was in the hospital, when I had my pains, and as I do it now, I, I have the spirit of blind Bartimaeus. And I don't say, oh God, I mean, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Uh-uh. I'm like, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me, because I need his mercy. Amen. When, when my chat chest get to hurting or when I have a coughing spell or whatever's going on with me or, 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 or the devil trying to play with my mind, whatever that goes on with me, I'm like, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. Because I need his mercy. I need his grace. Amen. That's what we got to do. We got to be boldly, so bold, boldly uh, before the Lord. We can't come to him like we, we some kind of little baby and we crawling and, and we don't know how to speak up for ourselves. You not speak up for yourself when somebody piss you off. So when, so uh, uh, so so as you in your storm right now things ain't going right. Your finances ain't right. Your husband or wife cutting the food. Your, your children ain't doing right. You don't want to go to work. You need to holler out to Jesus. Jesus thy son of David have mercy on me. Go to him boldly. Like God I need you. You know I don't like that job but God I need you to do something for me. God, let, I know your grace is sufficient. So, God, I need you to make a way out of nowhere. God, you know my husband. You know my wife that got on my last nerve. I need you to move in a mighty way. See, that's what we got to do. We got to go through him. We got to go to him boldly if we want God to move. If we want God to move because his grace 
is for sufficient. It does. Let me read that again. It says, come, come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might attain mercy. And see, y'all, we need mercy. We need mercy. When we feel like we're up against the ropes, and then when they box it, and, 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 and the box get up against the ropes, or, or when the rouse is up against the ropes, amen. We, we need mercy. To help us when we think we're up against the ropes and we're about to fall out for the three count or the ten count. We need mercy. Have mercy. We need mercy and find grace to help us in need. Amen. You, when you know you're in need, we need grace. You know what the Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 4 and 16 tell us? It says that we may attain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. My God. Ain't nothing like grace helping us. Hey, help put food on the table. Help with the light bill. Uh, amen. Uh, give us a mind to go to work. Amen. Give, give us the, ain't nothing like grace. Give us a mind to love our enemies. It says uh, in, in time of need. So sometimes we, uh, hey, uh, 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 Miss Rob, so sometimes we in a time of need to love our enemies. <laughs> sometimes we in need, amen, uh, 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 just to speak to somebody. Because sometimes we get in our, you know, like the young people say, we get in our feelings. Sometimes we in the need of just to praise and worship God because sometimes we get in the self and, <clears throat> and don't let us have a little money. Don't let things start going our way. We in need then to worship and praise God. My, 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 my. All right, all right, all right, all right. So that's what that was talking about. And it says the law of oversight extends to the forest and reaches to the most challenging uh uh in uh well across the plant uh planet. Uh that God also transformed barren wilderness and the areas that became lush pastures. See God God can make uh, a wilderness, he could turn a wilderness into a pastor where a flock to go and, and graze and 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 and, 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 uh, and have that nourishment. So if God could turn a, a, a wilderness into a pastor, guess what? Your wilderness, whatever dry, the drought and rough spot in your life, God could turn that around into a rich, a joyful, peaceful uh, a thing in your life. But it's how it's how you approach Him. That, that's the thing. Is this how we approach? God, sometimes God don't move because we don't approach him right. I'm going to say that again. A lot of times God don't move on our behalf uh, because we don't approach him right. Amen. It says, uh, okay, in that next, um, uh, well, I guess in the fourth, I will, I'll say, I guess with the fourth verse of the Sunday School list, it says, how our society these days and more separated from the land we are and we are painfully unaware at times of God's abundant provision for us we are reminded through the that grace i mean we are reminded through that God cares not only in uh, only in Psalms 50, uh, 65 but in Matthew 6:25 through 34 Jesus urged us not to worry about whether we have enough of the basics my God, including food, amen. Yeah, Matthew 6, 25 to 34, uh, tell us about this, uh, including food, drink, and clothing. He points to the nature, to stress that we can depend on God to meet every need. Amen. That's the bottom line of that, to this, and just trusting God. That's just the bottom line. The bottom line to Matthew 25 to 34 to, to be activated in your life is just the bottom line to trust God. It says God uh, uh, says that we can depend on God to meet our needs. So whatever you're seeking, if it's healing, financial blessing, amen. Like Mr. Adam, if, if, it, if, it's, if it's seeking, uh, uh, want to have a child, God knows our needs. He knows everything. So uh, Heather, uh, all you got to do is just start saying, God, I thank you. I thank you for my child in advance. I, I, I don't see it yet <laughs> because I'm walking by faith and not by sight. But God, I thank you right now for my child. Amen. I, God, you know we've been trying to have it. We, You know we've been trying to conceive a child, but it ain't happening. But God, you know there's a need. And you tell us in your scripture that, uh, you, you know, um, uh, 
about multiplying and God, but I thank you in advance. And so that's all you got to do. If I got the right heather. <laughs> and so uh, that's all you got to do is thank God in advance. That's all we got to do is a lot of times we don't want to trust God for our needs, but when we trust God for our needs, like what Matthew 25 and 34 says, everything will work out. Everything will work out, but we will sweat and we'll pout when we when we thank God don't show up on our time. But a lot of times, our time is not God's timing. When he show up, he'll fix the situation. But we just got to be patient and trust him. It goes on, says the birds don't worry about the future. For God took care of them. He also take care of us. Who are who are far more viable to him than the birds? Amen. And it says the Savior noted that the Savior noted that being anxious about the basis of life achieves nothing. Amen. So when we anxious and we anxious, I, I had to get over that period. Anxious to go get something. Amen. It, it the 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 the, uh, the Sunday school lesson tell us that is is wasting our energy because the Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing but in everything in prayer and supplication. So when we anxious, sometimes that cuts our blood well. It cuts our blessings out when we're anxious because that means we're trying to rush God. When we're anxious, that we're trying to put a time on God when God's going to work on his own time. So don't be anxious. Whatever you whatever you stand in need of, uh, if you're anxious for a house, anxious for a car, man or woman, or uh, 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 just whatever the thought can be, uh, or your healing, don't be anxious. Let God be God and he'll show up and do what he do what he do on time. Amen. And when he do do it, I guarantee you, amen, you'll be satisfied. It says, and reveals out, it says, okay, let me read this, the whole thing. The Savior noted, the Savior note that being anxious about the basis of life achieves nothing, waste, waste, waste our energy and reveals our lack of faith. Amen. See, that's what I'm talking about. When you're anxious and you're trying to rush God, you ain't got faith. Yeah, uh, when you ain't rushing God, like God, I, I don't know. I, I I need fifty bucks uh, before tomorrow. Uh, uh, but when you go and and, uh, uh, and trying to make yourself have fifty dollars for tomorrow, you've been anxious. But like God, I, I don't ask. I, I don't. You said in your word, accident shall be given. I done did that part. So God, it's all up to you now. So that's decent in order. But when you try to go make yourself fine or get $50, you anxious. You anxious. So you might get it, but it might be out of the will of God. And so when you, but when God, uh, uh, if you uh, uh, wait on the Lord and that $50 come, it, 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 it won't be a burden to you. It, 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 everything will fall in place. So a lot of times, uh, well, back in the day, uh, I was anxious. If I think something I wanted, I go down and get a little small loan and go get what I wanted because I was anxious. That wasn't the will of God, but see, that was a growing point. We had to we got to realize what we're wrong and what we uh, going short at and fix it for God to be pleased with us. Amen. I know that ain't popular, but it, it's the truth. The uh, antidote to recognize that the Creator already knows our needs, needs and is eager to meet them. See, he is eager to meet our needs, but we got to do what we supposed to are supposed to towards the Lord is by trusting him. As long as we do that, God is eager to meet our needs. We can uh, confidently choose to give God first priority in our lives with the rest of the creation. We can rejoice that the Lord give us each new day to serve him faithfully. That's a point right there. It says we can confidently choose to give God first priority in our lives. And if you want God to really move in your life, give him priority. You give him priority over the soap poppers. You give him priority over the football games. You give him uh, priority uh, over the basketball game. You give him priority over your favorite TV show like uh, The Empire. Uh, uh, or whatever you just can't miss. You give God priority over that stuff. You give God priority over your cigarettes. You give uh, God priority over your beer. You give God priority going to the movies. You give God priority uh, uh, 
or going working out and see how God will bless your life. My, 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 my. See, a lot of times when we run short, we do everything about right except giving God priority. We sing, we worship Him, we praise Him, we give Him the glory, but yeah, on the back burner. <laughs> on the back burner. So God is a jealous God. God don't want to be on the back burner. God, when we wake up in the morning, I, what should hit our mind? And I'll be honest with you, I don't do it every morning, but when we hit well, we, uh, we uh, wake up in the morning before I foot hit the flow. God, thank you. God, I appreciate it. You you let uh, you watched over me all night long as I slept in slumber. God, you didn't have to do it, but you did. But we get up, go on our, uh, go on about our business, go to work, uh, fix breakfast, put our clothes on, take a shower. I ain't said nothing about God, but He the one that took care of us all last night when we didn't when we didn't even know that we was in the world. Anything could have happened to us last night. Somebody could have broke in and killed us. House could have caught on fire. Could have died in our sleep. Or could have just had a bad night. Some kind of pain could have hit our bodies. But God took care of us all last night. But when we woke up this morning, was that was his was it on our mind, our priority to give him the praise and the thanks. <laughs> I cut my own foot on that one. Amen. So that lets me know. I need to work on that. I need to work on before my foot hit the floor in the morning or as my feet hitting the floor in the morning, giving God the praise, giving God the glory because I realized if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Well, thank you, Lord. I'm so glad that I'm on the Lord's side. Amen. Because if I wasn't on the Lord's side, ain't no telling what had happened to me last month. But thank God I'm on the Lord's side and he got me in the palm of his hands. Amen. The Sunday School question says, what are some ways that God provides for his people's needs? I put taking care of them, uh, taking care of the land. That's some of the way that God provides for his, um, his people's needs. Because if the land ain't taken care of, we won't have nothing in the grocery store. I'm going to say that again. If the land is not taken care of, excuse, uh, we would not have no food in the grocery store. So we got to have soil. So God got to take care of the land with water and, and what else that the land needs for we to have food and stuff in the, in the grocery store. Because if the land ain't taken care of, that means the animals ain't going to live. That means the, the corn and the okra and we have the produce and vegetables that we eat. We're not produced because the land is not taken care of. But God provide for us by taking care of the land. Question number eight. How does God sustain the world he created? By water and clothing in it. That's what I. That's the answer I came up with. The same you know, ones got the Sunday school lesson. That's what I put down. How does God sustain the world he created? By, by letting it rain on it. And clothing it because if if God hadn't closed the ground with grass and trees and stuff, guess what? Every time it rained, it'd be a wash away, it'd be a flood. But God, uh, then, uh, then, uh, question number nine says in Psalms 13, how did the psalmist to speak depict all creation? All creation, he, uh, but about that, he's saying. That the trees, the corn, whatever, the flock, all of them that they got joy. They sing, they sing, they shout for joy, and they also sing. Know what the Psalms it says? It says, "How did question number ten? How did Jesus confirm that God provides all our needs?" Amen. Uh, how did Jesus confirm that God provides all our needs? He confirmed it by saying, "If." God take care of the fowls of the air. If God take care of the birds, if he take care of everything that flies, surely the Bible says we're more important. So if God uh, take care of the birds, and if the birds or the flocks of the air don't have nothing to worry about, and we're more important, but the Bible tells us that's how, uh, uh, that's how Jesus confirmed to us that God will provide for us, that if he provide for the the, the files of the Arab, surely he's going to take care of us. That's the answer to question uh, number 10. All right, get on through here, y'all. Um, all right, uh, I'm going to read this a paragraph, the nice paragraph about a man. 
Well, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It says, Remembering God's Provision. The story is talked about uh, a young man named Carl. Carl, as he was growing up, Carl uh, wanted to be a, all he had in his mind to be a professional basketball player. He said he was wanting to be like Michael Jordan. And, and all his life, as he was growing up, uh, that's what he focused on, being a professional basketball player. And the story says his family and his friends got behind him, said his grades was good, and he, and he, and he studied uh, longer than the rest of his peers, and he, and he worked hard. And it says as he was playing basketball um, uh, for a school, that the scouts came and they liked him, so he ended up in the NBA. So when Carl ended up in the NBA, guess what? He was like the prodigal son. He started using his money wastefully. He, the, the story said, he didn't pay no attention to his his accountant. He was just spending money how uh, he wanted to and made bad investment. And they said Carl. Was anybody that came to call and said, Carl, can I b borrow some money or let me have some money? They said, Carl gave uh, uh, people money and, you know, everybody money. That reminds me of the story of M.C. Hammer. They, they said when M.C. Hammer had made it back in the day that he tried to take care of everybody in his neighborhood. Amen. And then he went broke. Same way with Carl. Carl was going broke because everybody that came to him wanted a handout. Carl gave them a handout. But one thing about this, when you have a little nest egg, don't mean be led blessing people. Don't mean you got a little uh, nest egg that you're supposed to uh, 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 just give it out to everybody. No, you need your money for yourself. So be led when you're blessing somebody. Because you don't want to give somebody some money and they're going to buy a black and miles. They're going to buy some reefer. They're going to buy some cocaine. No, so you be led uh, 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 when you trying to be a blessing to somebody by, uh, uh, financially wise, but it goes on and it did say uh, that uh, it says uh, it says then his mother reminded him of one of his favorite scriptures, Psalm I mean, Proverbs six sixteen through nineteen, and it reads as this: It says these six things do with the Lord hate ye seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, a hand that shed innocent blood. My, 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 my. A hand God hates, a hand that shed innocent blood. A proud look, I just read it. A lying tongue. All this, that it says, the six things the Lord hate. And it says, and a heart that deceiveth wicked imagination. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. And we know a lot of people run to mischief. You got some people, all they, every time you turn around, they in some mischief. That's one of the things that the Lord hate. And you got some people, they got some wicked imagination. Wicked imagination. What you talking about, preacher? Well, thank you for asking. Imagination. Uh, 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 want something damn to the happening. That's wicked. Uh, 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 wicked. Wicked, wicked, anything that's not uh, 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 pleasing to God. And when they got that imagination, God, I mean, the Lord hates it. And it goes on and it says, A false witness that spread his lies, and he that sowed the scorn among his brothers. So, uh, Carl's mother had to remind him of this. And so it goes on to say, Thankfully, Carl came to understand that all these, all his blessings came from God, and he had to take these blessings, I mean, he had taken those blessings for granted. He changed his financial decision, separated himself from his bad habits and living, and submitted to the wisdom of the one who gave, who had given it all to him in the first place. See, a lot of times we get by, we get a little something, but we get beside ourselves. Amen. We can't, the old folks just say, don't get too big for your britches. Do not get too big for your britches. Do not 
lose your focus. When you start getting blessings, when you start getting up on your feet, don't forget about who helping you get up on your feet. Don't forget about who making your bank account add up. Don't forget about who taking away that pain out of your body. Don't forget about who helping you get in that house. Don't forget about who who uh, uh, help you get that call. You got to give all that stuff back to God and let God know, God, I appreciate it. God, I give it back to you. Amen. That's what Carl had to realize. He had to come to his senses and he had to come to his senses to remind himself if it had not been for God, he wouldn't be playing uh, 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 basketball. He wouldn't be having a multi, multi million dollar contract. So, when, so, uh, so thankful that Carl came to his senses before something happened to him. Amen. So a lot of times people don't come to their senses until something happened to him, I mean to them, and everything they had is wiped away. Wiped away. That's when they want to realize, oh, yeah, there is a God. God, I need you again. But yeah, uh, the whole time he was blessing you, making a way out of no way, you wasn't calling on him. You weren't thanking him. You weren't praising him. But all of a sudden now, it seems like everything's starting to uh, wither away. Your car tearing up. Uh, might lose your house. Your health going down. All of a sudden now, you're remembering God. I mean, God don't like to be on the back burner. It says, "What can, why can monetary success lead lead us to forget God's provision?" <coughs> I put down. It takes our focus off of God. We uh, so a lot of times when we get a uh, little money in our pocket, we will forget about God because uh, we feel like we feel like we can buy everything. But you can't buy a joy. You can't buy a peace. You can't buy happiness, and if you could imagine, you wouldn't have no kind of suicide rate in Hollywood. You, Hollywood got all, <clears throat> you know, and all the millionaires in Hollywood, movie stars, uh, TV stars, and all that. <clears throat> but you'll read about they commit suicide. Let you know, money can't buy everything. Uh, people in Hollywood, uh, uh, you hear about how their health goes down and, and uh, health. That they their health situation, <clears throat> they get counseled, they get sick like we do, <clears throat> and it let us know, and this let us know, hey, money can't buy healing. <laughs> I mean, it could buy the best doctors and, and, and some medicine, uh, maybe that the rest of us can't get to, but uh, it let us know that money cannot buy your healing, and so that's how a monetary success can lead to us to forget about God, God's provision because uh, we feel like we don't need Him at the time. When we do, which is uh, which, um, which is it, which is it better to have more things or a close relationship with the Lord? Of course, I rather have a close. A, I rather have a close relationship with God than have material stuff and not have the Lord on my side. Because, like I said, none when it when it comes down to the close of the day. And, and, and when you need healing, and when you need peace, and you need joy, and you need some love in your life, none of that stuff can help, but the Lord can. Question number 13, how do you recognize and maintain what God has provided for you? Well, I recognize it because if I know if I know I couldn't have made a way out of no way, and the only one that could have done it was God, that's how I recognize it, and, and I maintain it by Letting God know I appreciate it. God, I appreciate what you've done for me. I appreciate you making a way out of no way. That's how I maintain it. All right, go on to the close of this. All right, we're down to the last part of this. All right, bringing it on home. It says, often, in, uh, the last page, he meets all our needs. Often we worry that we will not have enough of what we think we need, whatever that may be. But we have to assure, but we have the assurance that God does provide for us. Amen. That still go back to uh, Matthew, Matthew the uh, Matthew the sixth chapter in the twenty fifth and the thirty fourth verse. That's what it's talking about. That's the assurance that God does provide and that God will provide for us. And it says, as Paul said, "My God will meet all your needs according to His." Glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 and 19. I'm going to say that again. As Paul said, my God will meet all your needs, our needs, according to his glorious riches in Christ 
is Jesus. So don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about it. Go to bed, rest it. Go to bed and sleep good tonight knowing that whatever you stand in need of, God can do it. God can make a way out of no way. But if you go to bed in doubt, you're going to lose some sleep. When, uh, when you remember that God provides for your needs, you can be at ease. Amen. See there? I, 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 uh, I forgot it was going to say that because I, I ain't read it. Uh, it's, it's been a while since I read it. But I'm going to say that again. When you remember that God provides for your needs, you can be at ease and stop worrying about what you don't have. Because you know that God <laughs> is a provider. And in God, I never seen I, my favorite, one of my favorite scriptures, seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed, S-E-E-B, begging for bread. And be humbly, and being humbly thankful for all he has provided for us. We got to be thankful. We got to be thankful. We got to be humbly thankful for everything that God done for us from the cold that we have. Thank him. Like God, thank you. I don't have the cold no more from, from, from delivering you from the flu. God, I thank you. My body is not aching. I don't have the flu no more. God, I, 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 I thank you. Amen. I'm not worried about the situation I was worrying about. Amen. Humbly thank him for whatever he done did for you. Amen. Uh, uh, and, and you know it was nobody but God. We got to humbly thank him. Amen. So you need to reminisce and thank God for your blessings. Amen. Thank God. For your blessing, what uh, Luther Barnes and the uh, uh, and the uh, uh, song of song, uh, uh, see what the Lord has done, count your many blessings and see what the Lord has done, amen. We need a, all of us, um, from down the Pope, the bishops, the elders, the the, uh, the the apostles, all of us, ain't nobody a zip. We need to look back over our lives and and and. and and, and see what the Lord has done and try, we can't count all of it and count our many blessings and then come back and humbly thank him for what he has done. Oh, yes sir. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for being a part of In the Word. Thank you for uh, coming being a part of uh, the Sunday School Review for the ones that have the same Sunday School lesson. Uh, may, God, uh, may, help, may God continue to bless you and may heaven continue to smile upon you uh, uh, and, and as I always say, I love you from the uh, from with my old heart. I love you, Amen. Uh, if you need me, message me, and, and just tell me to pray. You don't have to tell me what it's about. And I just and I try to, Amen, intercede for you and pray. But I, like I always say, let your faith kill your doubt. Don't let your doubt kill your faith. If you bless God, He'll surely gonna bless you back, Amen. If you bless God, He surely will bless you back. Amen. Now may the grace of God, his sweet communion, rest, rule, and abide with us forevermore. Amen. Uh, until we meet again, my brothers and my sisters, remember, keep looking to the hill which cometh your help, knowing that when you look to the hills, that your help not coming from nobody else from, but from the Lord. So as you look to the hills which cometh your help, and knowing your help coming from the Lord, until we meet again, Amen. Keep looking to the hills because your help is on the way.